Hello everyone, in this video we'll be going over reforging in Dauntless. A reforge in Dauntless involves taking any level 20 weapon that you have and interacting with the spark forge in the center of Ramsgate and bringing it down to level 1. You are able to do a reforge when you unlock the reforge node in your slayer's path once a weapon reaches level 20 and have 100 of the currency called Aether Sparks. Aether Sparks can be acquired through opening up daily fountain cores, island events, opening patrol chests, buying from rewards cash through seasonal currency, slayer links, mastery rewards, and doing the weekly heroic escalation. When you log in, make sure to go over to the bazaar and interact with the fountain. Flipping the coin will give you 4 bounty tokens and a daily core. Daily core will give you some aether sparks, patrol keys, and merits. Your main form of acquiring aether sparks will be doing island events, and they take place on most hunting ground islands. They happen 10 minutes after entering an island, or from the last event that took place. You just need to make sure you kill the behemoth after that 10 minutes is up and the event for the island will take place. If you don't want to wait the full 10 minutes you can try island hopping which is queuing for public islands to try to find an event already going on. It's best to do events on islands that are at a higher level compared to where you are at because the rewards for aether sparks at least scale with your level. So doing a higher island event will regularly give you more and going to islands lower or at your weapon level. For the most part you will want to find events that are multi-round based since they would give you more aether sparks compared to that of high alert events which are only one round. When it comes to patrol chests it doesn't matter in what island you open them on since the rewards do not scale based on island level. You can go to the second island and have the same rewards as that as the very last one. For the rewards cash you can buy 100 aether sparks for 2000 seasonal currency once per week. If you don't plan on spending the seasonal currency on anything else, you can get enough Aether Sparks for a reforge every week. Slayer Links are another reward system that gives you loot based on linking and playing with friends. Each level reach grants a random reward based on the reward pool shown which can include Aether Sparks. If you don't happen to have anyone for this, you can ask people in your Ramsgate or go ahead and join either the official Dauntless Discord or mine. Both are linked in the description. For Mastery, there is a reward for Aether Sparks when you reach Weapon Mastery 19 on each of the weapons. Completing objectives and playing with different weapons will help level up your mastery for these rewards. If you manage to complete a heroic escalation, you get an additional 50 Aether Sparks every week. If you are not prepared for heroics, I wouldn't advise doing this and just focus more on island events. When you do a reforge, the only thing you lose is the power and resistance rating on your slayer because a lot of that comes from what level you have your weapon at. Each level provides 20 power and resistance, so going from level 20 to level 1 lowers your power and resistance by 380. You will need to level up your weapon back up in order to regain that power and resistance you lost in order to reforge again. For example, my weapon power is at 583 and my resistance is at 540 on my hammer. If I reforge my hammer, my weapon power drops to 184 and my resistance is lower to 160. Usually both of them would go down by 380 each, but since I had reforge bonuses affecting my weapon power, it dropped by 399 power instead. The benefits of doing a reforge is gaining a currency called an Aether Heart and a passive reforge bonus unlocked through the Slayer's Path. The Aether Heart is used to power surge your gear and that increases it to its max potential. There's a tier system that determines your rating, whether it be power on weapons or resistance on armor, the perks that your gear provides, and for weapons, how powerful the unique effect becomes. Depending on how early you encounter the behemoths to make their gear determines their tiers. Before we start, here's what's categorized in the tiers. Tier 1 through 4 are the non-legendary type of gear, where tier 5 are legendary and tier 6 are power surged. Behemoths that are considered legendary are the ones found in Escalation 10 through 50 in round 5 and the Chronovore in Paradox Breaks until the Chronovore gets its own Radiant Escalation 10 through 50 in May 26, 2022. Let's go over the weapons first. There are three things to look at for a weapon, their power rating, perk stat bonus, and unique effects. When it comes to power rating, tier 1 weapons have a power rating of 20, tier 2 with 40, tier 3 with 60, tier 4 with 80, tier 5 with 100, and tier 6 is 120. Power rating determines our damage we do against behemoths. Both slayers and behemoths have their own rating system. When our power rating is lower than that of a behemoth, we will end up doing less damage to it compared to when we are at or above the behemoth's rating. All gear has a perk stat tied to them. These are the cells that add on to your character stats and are shown in your loadout perk summary section. 
When it comes to perk stats, tier 1 and 2 gear have a plus 1 perk, tier 3 to 5 have plus 2 perk, and tier 6 have a plus 3 perk. When it comes to the unique effect, every weapon has their own relating to the behemoth that they're crafted from. The unique effects only have a crafted and a power surge related stat. If you crafted a weapon and want to increase the effectiveness of the unique effect, the only way to increase it is through power surging it. Let's go through an example of a crafted versus power surge weapon. Crafting Savit weapons for example is considered a tier 3 weapon, so their power rating is 60, have a plus 2 pulse perk stat, and a unique effect that does 250 shock damage. Once power surged, the new values for the Savit weapons will have a power rating of 120, plus 3 pulse perk stat, and 325 shock damage unique effect stat. So power surging weapons increases its power rating, perk stat, and unique effects. Now let's go over the armor. Armor pieces have a resistance and perk stat. Resistance start off at 5 at tier 1, 10 at tier 2, 15 at tier 3, 20 at tier 4, 25 at tier 5, and 30 at tier 6. Resistance determines how much damage you will take when getting hit from behemoths. The higher the resistance, the less damage taken. Just like weapons, armor has the same tier system for perks. Let's go over a crafted versus power surge armor piece. The Dark Watch is a helmet piece from Shroud and is considered a tier 4, meaning it has 20 resistance stat and a plus 2 cunning perk stat. When power surge, the stats are increased to 30 resistance and plus 3 cunning stat perk. So power surging an armor piece increases its resistance and perk stat. Alright, now that we've covered that, let's go over what pieces of your loadout you should start to power surge first. Let's go over two different examples, one without a legendary and one with a legendary weapon. Let's go over the loadout without a legendary weapon first. I recommend that you power surge your weapon, then your armor pieces. The reasoning for that is power surging weapons as mentioned before increases your power rating, perk stat, and unique effects. All of these help you kill the behemoths faster, so you will end up leveling up faster whereas armor only increases your perk stat and resistance, as resistance does not help in killing behemoths faster since it's more for survivability. Now let's go over what to power surge first with the legendary weapon. The reason why there's a separate example of what you should power surge first it's because legendary weapons have what's called a weapon bond. A weapon bond is using a non-legendary weapon from the same element category and binding it to a legendary, gaining the perks and unique effect of that weapon. This means that the legendary weapon only has the power rating tied to it, whereas the weapon bond determines your perk stat bonus and your unique effect. So basically this means a legendary weapon loadout has three different parts. The legendary weapon itself, the weapon bond, and the armor. Now the order I recommend to power surge first is the weapon bond, the armor, and then the legendary weapon itself. The reason why is because there's more value with the weapon bond, as power surging the weapon bond will increase your weapon's perk stat and the unique effect. The armor is next since you have perk stat increases. And finally the legendary weapon itself because the difference between a crafted legendary and a power surge version is only 20 power. Another way to acquire an Aether Heart is directly forging your Aether Sparks into an Aether Heart. The cost for this is 200 Aether Sparks to make a single Aether Heart. This is an alternate method for those that consistently gain more Aether Sparks than they spend per reforge. The other benefit of reforging is the passive reforge bonuses. There are currently 7 different reforge bonuses tied to each weapon upon the release of this video. The sword increases weapon meter regeneration, the axe increases power, the hammer increases stagger damage, chain blades reduces stamina cost, Warpike increases wound damage, Repeaters increases movement speed, and Strikers increases attack speed. These bonuses are shared across all weapons, but some weapons don't benefit from them. For example, Warpike reforges. They increase wound damage, but only Chain Blades and Warpike are able to wound. Reforging for this bonus doesn't mean that all the other weapons will be able to wound. Those weapons will need an outside wounding source like Acidic to make them wound in the first place, and then the reforge bonuses get applied after it. There are a total of 5 reforge bonus nodes per weapon, and they are all unlocked through a certain number of reforges based on the weapon you use. Starting off, we have the first node, which is unlocked through your first reforge of that weapon. The second, third, fourth nodes have a 2 reforge difference between them, so you have to reach reforge 3, 5, 7 for their unlocks. And finally, the fifth reforge bonus node is unlocked after 3 more reforges from your fourth node, which is a total of 10 reforges on your weapon. It's up to you if you want to do all 10 reforges before moving on to your next weapon or spread your reforges across.
instance, for example, you have to do three reforges to get from your fourth to fifth reforge bonus on a single weapon, whereas you can end up doing your first and second reforge bonus node unlock on a different weapon for the same amount of reforges. The order I would recommend to reforge all your weapons would be axe, strikers, hammer, repeaters, sword, warpike, and chain blades. Axe increases your power and strikers increases your attack speed, and these are applied to all your weapons naturally. Hammer increases your stagger damage, which all weapons can naturally do except for repeaters. Repeaters for movement speed for all weapons. Sword for weapon meter regeneration, since only four weapons have weapon meters, which are the sword, axe, chain blades, and warpike. Warpike for wounds, since only chain blades and warpike can naturally wound. And finally, chain blades for stamina cost reduction, because there's certain builds that involve the adrenaline cell that gives you damage based on missing stamina. So chain blade reforges would actually make it worse when using those types of builds since you are depleting less stamina than normal. That's just my recommendation on the order to reforge your weapons at but it's ultimately up to you. Do note that after 10 reforges there is no more benefits to them and the only purpose of doing more than 10 is to get an Aether Heart after another reforge and a change in your border on your weapon. In terms of your border, 1 through 10 is bronze, 11 through 20 is silver, 21 through 30 is gold, 31 through 40 is diamond, and anything above 41 is ruby. There are two other nodes in this section relating to reforging and they are the banked XP node and the XP bonus node. The banked XP node, once unlocked, lets you store XP at level 20 and that carries over to your next reforge for up to 6 levels. You gain 75% of your regular XP per behemoth kill while XP banking. You can tell how many levels you will be at on your next reforge based on the bar section you can see below your weapon emblem. Each bar represents a different level added to your next reforge. In terms of efficiency, XP banking is not worth it if you plan on filling it up to level 6 because the only way to gain XP at a good rate is to fight high level behemoths and they generally take more time than to fight lower behemoths after a reforge. Ideally, banked XP is meant for players that want to earn some XP after their weapon is at 20 while they wait for friends to be able to reforge with them or wait until they complete something like a heroic escalation before they reforge their weapon. The XP bonus node is unlocked just like normal reforge weapon bonuses, but based on your total reforges. The nodes are unlocked through a series of 1, 3, 5, 7, and 10 total reforges from all your weapons combined. So that means you can have 3 reforges on Axe, 2 reforges on Strikers, and 1 reforge on the rest of your weapons, and you will have all the XP bonus nodes available. Each node grants an additional 3% weapon XP per unlock and are worth investing into. My recommendation to reforge fast is to fight behemoths that are at least 5 levels above you. Fighting behemoths 5 levels above you gives you the max amount of XP you can get per behemoth kill. Be sure to focus on taking a weapon with elemental advantage for a majority of the fights since that will make you do more damage to the behemoths that are weak to that element. A general good route to take when you reforge is doing Escalation 1 through 13 until you reach level 8 and then you head on over to Hades Reach and farm Hellions there until around level 14 and from level 14 to 17 you do Escalation 10 through 50s and then at 17 plus you head on over to Blazeworks Hunting Ground. If you happen to have a group that has Malkarian weapons, then another method to go for reforging is through the hunting grounds. The reason why you should take Malkarian weapons in groups is because if there's 3 to 4 players when you Malkarian teleport to the closest behemoth, the behemoth will become shocked at the start of the fight, giving you free uptime and damage as you can follow up with fart breaks and stuns in order to stunlock the behemoth for a majority of the fight. For the hunting grounds, you will want to focus on islands with terra behemoths for elemental advantage. An example of a route for reforging would be Fortune's Folly until level 8, Razor Cliff Isle until level 15 or 16, and then the Blaze Works. A good source for weapon XP is bounty tokens. You can get bounty tokens through your daily fountain coin flip, patrol chest, slayer links, and blaze work island events. As previously mentioned, you get 4 tokens from doing a daily coin flip, a 20% chance to get a token from opening patrol chests, a possible reward through slayer link, and when doing the events on blaze works that take place every 10 minutes. This does not include the Phalanx events. Well everyone, that will do it for this video. If you find this helpful, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to help out the channel. If you feel like supporting me, I do have an Epic Games creator code which is self-manifest. Be sure to follow me over on Twitch as well, and feel free to join my Discord. Both are in the description. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you later. Take care.